As a woman making it in business which was seen as a man's world and that too in a sector which was new then, Kiran set off on an incredible journey and helped Biocon achieve global recognition. She has received many honours and accolades for her entrepreneurial achievements and she believes that a lot of women are now following her example and coming into their own in the field of science in India. You know, I think when I look up, when I look around the biotech sector, there are a lot of women in, in, in the biotech sector. You know, some of them, of course, followed my example. So, in fact, there was a time when the biotech sector was dominated by women. Hmm. Even Manju Sharma, the secretary of Department of Biotechnology, was a woman. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, you know, there were a lot of women in, 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 in the biotech space. And today there remains a quite a large presence of women, women entrepreneurs, uh, women professionals in life science uh, businesses. But uh, I certainly believe that for any sector uh, to have this recognition uh, that women are equal partners in, 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 in the workplace, I think does take uh, you know, time and does take more women to be inducted into the workplace. So certainly we see this happening in our organization, we see this happening in the biotech sector, in the life sciences sector, I certainly think that you see more women coming into the workplace, but yes, it takes time. I think the banking sector is uh, particularly very fortunate because, you know, ICICI Bank actually uh, nurtured the women's brigade. And there was one person who was responsible for that, Mr. Vagul. And he was responsible for your success also? And he was also. responsible for me So what well. was it in him that allowed, I mean, him to create that kind of bandwidth? You, you've interacted very well and he gave you your big break, right, in business. So I think Mr. Vagul is a renaissance man. He's a, he's a, he's a very liberated thinker. And I think he's one of those uh, uh, new age men, I would say, who was ahead of his time. He clearly recognized that, uh, you know, women had great potential and great leadership potential and that it was being suppressed. They were not given the opportunity. And so I think what he decided was that he would actually nurture these women to come up and every one of the uh, women uh, that are playing a leadership role today in, in the nationalized or Indian banking sector are his, uh, you know, girls, I would say. <laughs> But that was one end of the spectrum, uh, Kiran. You've got some great anecdotes of how difficult it was to get your first loan uh, when you were an entrepreneur. Has that changed or are women still seen in the bucket of the less privileged who need SOPs? See, I think the, the women still want SOPs, which is, I think, a little, you know, disappointing. I don't think women should ask for SOPs because I remember... Uh, when I was, uh, you know, just starting my company and I had great difficulty accessing capital, I remember going to the Karnataka State Finance Corporation and asking for a loan. And, um, you know, the, the manager there saying, oh, madam, we have a very good scheme for uh, scheduled car, scheduled tribes, disabled and women entrepreneurs. And I said, look, if you're going to club me with disabled and scheduled car, scheduled tribes, then I don't want such a loan on principle, because I'm neither scheduled caste nor am I disabled. I'm not a handicapped person. I want equal opportunities. I want to be treated equally like you would treat a male entrepreneur. So he was a bit taken aback, but then I fought for my uh, equal rights, so to speak, and I got it. Mm. You know, you're also the chairperson of IIM Bangalore. It's somewhere it starts at that very, very basic level where you have women coming into the workforce, going through professional training, and somewhere they fall off. What can you do to nurture youngsters, to, to show them the path? What should be done, you think? So, first and foremost, I think you need to uh, create more role models for young women to emulate, to feel comfortable that they can also, you know, aspire for success and attain it. Because one of the things uh, that does happen today is a lot of young women get daunted by looking at somebody like me and saying, oh, I can never be her, which is wrong, actually. I keep telling everyone, if I can do it, you can too. But I think most people only see me where I am today. I don't think they see the struggle I've gone through. Nor do they see the struggle any other man goes through either. You know, I think everyone who, who builds a company or an organization over time has gone through a very challenging time. But 
uh, I think women um, look at someone like me saying, no, this is not the kind of success I can attain. But if they see more successes of women who are running smaller businesses but are independent and enjoying their independence, I think that should give them that aspirational uh, sense. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how do you do it? I always find that all women go through a sort of a, a, a journey or a path where they come to a very important inflection point. If they go over that inflection point, then they endure and they stick with their jobs and their professions. If not, then they give up and resign themselves to a, a domesticated role. I've always felt that women don't take enough risks.